Well, welcome to a new lesson. And this lesson is all about relations and functions. Let me flip to full screen. There we go. And I'm going to minimize my recorder. Okay. So, today we're going to learn about four, key, four main concepts. And these are the vocabulary words. The first one is relationship. And base relation. A relationship is a relationship. And it's really represented by any set of ordered pairs. You see this all the time in data. Now, a function. A function is a type of relation. Just like a poodle is a type of dog. So a function is represented, can be represented by a set of ordered pairs. But also we know that a function is where each domain value is paired with exactly one range value. We'll talk more about that later. Domain. Domain represents all of the x values. Range. It represents all of the y values. So let's get into some examples. So our first example, we're going to talk about relationship, relations, and how they can be represented multiple ways. So we're going to look at a table, we're going to look at a graph, and we're going to look at a map. Now I'd like you to record this in your note paper as I go through. Now we're given three ordered pairs. So in the table, we list the ordered pairs. The two represents the x values. The three represents the y values. Four, seven, and then six, eight. Another way of saying x values is also called the domain. Another way of saying y values is the range. Now let's graph these three ordered pairs to show the relation. So I go over two, up three, over four, up seven, and then over six, up eight. I'm just going to estimate eight because it's off the graph. Here's a graph of the relationship. Now a mapping is where you kind of, it's self-explanatory. You take the x values and you map them with their corresponding y values. Now for fun, and this is real fun folks, I'm going to kind of mix up my y values. It's a little exciting. So we look at the first point here and two is mapped with three. So I do and draw an arrow to map two to three. Four is matched with seven. And then last of all, six is matched with eight. So here is my mapping of my three ordered pairs. Now, on this slide, I would like you to do this on your own. Would you please express this relation three different ways? In a table, graph, and mapping. You may pause the video at this time. Let's talk about domain and range, two very important concepts when we're looking at graphs and sets of data. Okay, so now you notice I've been given a graph. So if you're given a graph, you need to be able to identify the domain. Now remember the domain is all of the x values. Well, I'm going to use this vertical line to help me find the x values. So the minimum x is here, and then the maximum x is here. So you notice x can represent all of the numbers from 1 to 5. So how do I write that? Well, the minimum value is 1, the maximum value is 5, and x represents all of the values between 1 and 5. Now, since these are closed points, we know that the x is equal to those, so it's going to be equal. And then x is greater or equal to all the 1s, yet less than or equal to the to the five. Now let's do the exact same thing for range. Now range represents the y values. Let me move the domain out of the way so it's not confusing. I'm going to erase my work here. Okay, so range is the y values. So I look for the minimum y value, which is right there, and the maximum y value, which is right there. So we notice the minimum on the range is three, and the maximum is four, and this is representing the y values. And it's everything greater or equal, so this is a close point, to 3, and then less than or equal to 4. That is the domain and range of this given graph. Now what if you're given a mapping? Can you list the domain and range? Now when we list the domain and range, we generally list it in numerical order. So I notice my domain would be 1, 2, 5, and 6. Now the range from numerical order would be negative 4, negative 1, and 0. Isn't it 
curious how there are more values in a domain than the range. Well, that is possible in a relation. Okay, so we've looked at a graph, we've looked at a mapping, now we're given a table of values. Can you list the domain? Again, in numerical order, we have one, four, and eight. Now the range is something special. What are all the possible values? Well, you notice one is repeated twice. So one possible value for the range is one, and then the other possible value is four. Okay, so we've talked about domain and range. Now let's clarify the difference between relation or function. Now, I know this. I have a spelling error. Sorry, function. There we go. But it is fun, but it is a function. But you've got to remember, watch this, folks. Snazzy. A function is a special type of relationship, a relation, where every x value has exactly one and only one y value. Let's clarify that by looking at some graphs, mappings, and tables. So here are some graphs. Now, you'll notice at the top it says use the vertical line test. But why, Mrs. Clyver? Well, the vertical line test will let us know if, if every x value has exactly one y value. So you can see I can use my pencil as my vertical line. And as I scroll along the graph, you notice every single input has only one output. Like here, I'm approximately at negative 5, the output's negative 1. At negative 2, the output's 0. At 1, it's 2. At 5, it's 3. Okay, so this would be a function. So I drag the text there, ching, it's right. What about my next one? Does every y value, x value, excuse me, have exactly one y value? Well, no, it doesn't. Look right here. I have two y values for this one x value. So this is a relation. Great. Moving on along. Now, this is called a parabola. And we notice that it looks like it's really close there, but actually it is increasing. And so for every x value, I have exactly one y value. This is a function. And last of all, make a prediction before I say the answer. As I scroll my vertical line, is the vertical line crossing the graph more than one point? Can any occur within the graph? Why, yes. If you look there, you can see many times. It's crossing here, it's crossing here, it's crossing here, it's crossing here. Okay, we actually have, what, five outputs for that one input? So this is a relation. Okay, so we've looked at graphs. Now let's look at the mapping and see if this is a relation or a function. Okay, well here, does every input have exactly one output? Negative four goes to two. 1 to 1, negative 8 goes to 2, that's okay. Even though they both have the same output, negative 4 matches with exactly one number. Negative 8 matches with exactly one number. So each input matches with exactly one number. So therefore, this is a function. Whoops, I wonder how come it didn't click in. Huh, that's a function. Now here, does every input match with exactly one? Aha, check this out. 5 matches with 2, but also 5 matches with 4. So the input does not have exactly one output. So this would be a relation. Yeah, that's not working. It's a relation. Okay. Now last of all, let's look at our ordered pairs. So for the ordered pairs, can you tell whether we have a relation or a function? So 3 matches with negative 2, 5 matches with negative 1, 4 matches with 0, and then 3 matches with 1. Oh, can you see that three matches with two different outputs? So therefore, this is not a function, this is a relation. How about this problem? Negative six matches with two. I'm just going to kind of be orderly. Negative four matches with one. One matches with nine. And eight matches with two. Now, is it okay that negative six matches with two and eight matches with two? Yes, it is. This is a function because each input has exactly one output. Now, this is your time to summarize everything you've learned and still confused about. So I want you to write complete sentences answering these three questions. My first question is, describe three new skills or concepts you have learned today. You need to write this down on your paper somewhere. Next, describe two skills 
or concepts you may be struggling with a little bit. And last of all, describe one skill or concept that you understand very well and are close to mastery. So bring this completed worksheet, these completed notes with you, and your answers to these three questions to class for our next session.